Hey guys, welcome to the Unshakable Man podcast. I think that this is podcast number five today as we record. I'm in here today with Benjamin Roth. Benjamin has been practicing in the Unshakable Man community. You can let me know, Ben, if I'm wrong, but I think for over a year. For for over a year. Yeah, that's uh, right. I, and, um, and I've invited him in today to talk about his relationship with the practice, his work, what he's doing with himself, and to have a conversation about somatic self-leadership training, the word, the term, the overarching umbrella term that we give to the practice of all of the skills that we practice here within the Unshakable Man community. And as we record this today, today uh, is April Fool's Day, April 1st. Uh, it's it's the beginning of a new month, and I also just wanted to announce that we have Unshakable Man Cohort 5, Cohort 5B, because now we're going to be doing on three different schedules, one a month, launching a different one each month, uh, is, is an opening for enrollment today. So before this podcast is even available, uh, we are opening enrollment. Enrollment closes on May 2nd, and the cohort starts on May 5th. This is going to be a beautiful, meaningful, three-month transformative men's work journey with 9 to 27 open-hearted men. These men simply want to show up in their life and to create the space to do deep, meaningful work with themselves and other men. We show up, we create the space, We learn to hold the space, and when you commit to that container, you assist in creating the space for another man to trust, to let go, to open, to surrender, to receive, to practice, and to play, and to learn, and really, this is how we do this work, right? Like I I could just go on and on about this, but what I will say is that we live within this culture of manhood and masculinity that it puts us in a box and it shames men for stepping out of that box, right? For being Mm. different than the predominant culture of what it means to be a man, which is stoic or tough or aggressive, uh, competitive. And it separates us from each other and it separates us from our bodies. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to stop talking. Mm. (laughs) I'm going to let you talk, Ben. (laughs) We'll let you come on into the space. Dude, welcome Welcome in. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it's I'm so glad that we could sit down and have this conversation. And you know, just hearing you share about the upcoming cohort, it's just just the the idea of that container being set and inviting other men into it. It's like you know, just getting just getting chills thinking about it. Just Mm. the opportunity that awaits for anyone that goes into that space is super exciting. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I just, I, I love how you notice uh, what is happening on or in your body. And mm-hmm. you, like, even before we started recorded, recording, you, you mentioned like five times how you are feeling in and or on your body and you were noticing those chills. And um, I do want to bring because you, you know, I, th- I feel like in a way you're kind of coming in hot with, <laughs> after reading. You are the one you've been waiting for, mm. right? And we've been waiting to have this conversation. Um, I did just want to mention to any man who's listening that uh, w- we'll probably be talking about this book quite a bit today, uh, but we don't have to just talk about that book. I highly recommend reading You Are the One You've Been Waiting For, bringing courageous love into your uh, into partnership, I believe is what it was. But Ben, like, before I define what somatic self-leadership training is, what what is it to you? Hmm. I would say somatic self-leadership. I feel like it's hard for me to like put a very succinct definition on it, but I feel mm-hmm. like there are qualities yeah. to it. And yeah. so what I would say qualities of somatic self-leadership are trust, uh, mm. certainty, assurance, you know, these, mm. these feelings of, you know, feeling, feeling solid and grounded and connected with yourself in a way mm. that is, it's not, it's not reliant on, you know, you know, some sort of outside 
source to to validate it. It is this assurance of like this is this is my truth. Mm-hmm. This is what's right for me. This is what I need to do in this in this moment. And mm-hmm. it's it's that's almost like a like your your compass. That's the thing that is that is guiding you. Mm-hmm. Your compass. So we define somatic self-leadership training as the art and practice of dropping out of our heads and into our body, and then learning to become the primary caretaker for our parts of ourselves and being courageous, open-hearted leaders, right? And I know that that, that is that like eloquent, uh, <laughs> thing that we get to say all the time, right? Like yeah. is the art and practice of dropping out of our heads and into our bodies. Yeah. Right. And learning to become the primary caretakers for our parts of ourselves and becoming courageous, open hearted leaders. But mm-hmm. I heard you say trust, certainty, assurance, solid, grounded, connected. Mm. And I think for, for any man who's listening to this in this conversation, it's, it's for me, when you said trust and, and, and certainty and assurance is that, uh, oftentimes I think we think that these things are cognitive. We, we, there we're up in our head, but when you said those words, if we slowed it down and listened to what you really said, you said you felt that. Mm. Yeah. Right. And you, yeah, the, can you it's, say more about that? Yeah. They're very, in, in, in saying those words, you know, I was noticing, you know, them coming from my belly, coming from my heart and, mm-hmm. no, and just noticing in the qualities in terms of how I felt in my body saying those, saying those words and mm-hmm. And as you know, you said how we associate, we can associate with those words uh, cognitively. Um, I think it's in, in growing up, you know, as we're um, as we're raised by our parents and through society, you know, we look mm-hmm. for trust in, you know, our parents or in other kind of like mm-hmm. mentors, teachers to guide us, to provide that support for us. And, you know, I think mm-hmm. just that natural transition into adulthood um, requires us to find that support within ourselves. Wow. Yeah. And even as you said that though, it's, it's, uh, I remind myself that m- many of our parents don't know how to do this either. Right. Like they have their own traumas. They have their own neuroses. They have their own deficiencies or addictions or challenges that they've been through, uh, masks that they wear. And, uh, and, and we, it's really on us as men and as human beings to do this work, right. To pass on openness and, and, and connectivity to our kids, to our friends, to our relationships. Mm. Uh, but I think that this sometimes when we talk about this, I, I, you know, I've been talking about it more and more with men out in public. I notice that what we're really doing is it's like we're talking about karate, right? It's like mm. we're talking about it's like we're talking about tai chi. It's like we're talking about meditation, uh, and we're we're talking about taekwondo. Uh, it, I think it's important to to remind everyone that like we are talking about a physical practice. Yeah. Right. And when, when I say these, um, when I talk about martial arts, right? Like you have images in your mind of what from movies and the media and, and popular culture of what those things are. Yeah. Like movements for yoga and for breath work even. Right. But, but what, when we say dropping out of our head and into our body, can you share just what your ex- physical experience has been of that? Like, how have you practiced that over the past year? Mm. Mm. How do you notice it, like in your life and your practice? What's what's coming up around that that question is 
I think one space where I've been practicing it is, you know, again, in being within the Un Unshakable Man groups by entering right. into a container where we are intentionally so slowing down. Because while you were sharing that, that metaphor about uh, karate and Tai Chi, you know, people, you may associate those things with like, you know, learning a skill to like defend yourself or like learning how to learning how to fight or like um, mm -hmm. a, ver a very specific end goal. But you don't think about like the practice of doing karate in terms of like while you're, you know, eating breakfast or like, you know, while you're writing a letter or going about your day. And I think and that- yet, And yet it does, right? Like yeah. it, it affects your whole quality of your life, right? How you show up in your life. Yeah, totally. And it's, and I think, you know, kind of like I said before, we started to re recording of this own doubt within myself of like, I can enter into these spaces and I can, I can drop out of my head and, you know, bring presence to uh, sensations in my body. But the real challenge mm -hmm. is being able to do these practices when I'm not in those containers, when I am mm -hmm. making a smoothie or, you know, going out for a walk and, that's, I yeah. mean, that's really like the, the ever ongoing quality of, you know, doing this work is like bringing it into every experience. And that, when you said making a smoothie, I, I'm like, when you're making a smoothie, you're not just making a smoothie. In my mind, the story in my head that I just made up was that you're, you're making a smoothie at eight o'clock in the morning and you're thinking about, you have, you realize you have a headache from going out the night before you feel bad about it. Mm. You start to ruminate on it. You start to beat yourself up, right? Or um, uh, I'm again. I'm making up a sta a story here, right? For um, uh, or you or you're 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 thinking about a, a a date you went on and how you could have been a different way, or you're wondering if this person likes you, right? <laughs> like, mm. can you give me another example that we can play with here of what, what might be happening while you're having a smoothie or. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I think like the example of like, you know, going on a date or like any like, you know, social mm. interactions, like say if, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So one, one example of, you know, trying to create connections with with meeting with meeting women or like or like setting up you know like meeting up for like coffee or just like wanting to create a connection with someone and then um they you know changing the plans last second i've had this happen to me mm -hmm. recently of trying to make plans and they just keep falling through uh to the point where it's just getting frustrating i'm um, like i don't even know if i want to you know make the effort to see this person and right and then just noticing, you know, how in like in the background that that, you know, like frustration and that that kind of like anxious energy of, you know, that situation not w working out is quickly masked by like, you know, like, hmm, OK, I don't now I'm in this kind of negative space. I have probably healthy food I could eat, but you know what? I feel like it'd be easier if I just, you know, go order, go order a pizza. And yeah. I think, you know, kind of where this dovetails into self-leadership is like that place of noticing that being with it and also deciding to like, okay, pizza isn't really what I want. I have this food that I can make. Um, mm -hmm. But then for me, I've noticed, you know, it's, it's not always that easy. I'm like, no, fuck it. I actually mm -hmm. really kind of just want pizza right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I, 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 um, I love the frivolity of the example that we're talking about right now, right? Mm. And I think what I want to point out, what I notice within this, and from a training perspective, is that we talk about brave spaces, like we need a space, right? And when you, for a man who's coasting in his life, uh, drifting along in your life, you're moving through the the whirlwind of your life, you have perspective on how you are 
inside of one of these spaces, mm -hmm. one of these spaces where we have seven points of structure, right? Like we arrive in the space, we set agreements around what the intention is to be in the space and how we're going to show up, how we're going to respond, how we're going to take responsibility so that we can reinstate safety in the group, right? Mm -hmm. We then ground, we drop out of our head into our bodies. We notice what we're coming in with, right? And we root down into the ground, right? Then we check in again, check in round one, then we check in round two, then we check in round three, right? And then finally, uh, I would check out at the end, we check out and then we have our inspired integrations where we, something was meaningful, something we, we showed up to something in our life and we shifted our relationship with that problem, right? Because all problems in our life are sensations in our body. Mm. They're not in our mind. Our mind creates a sensation in the body or the sensation in the body triggers a thought and judgment story in the mind. But because the body has 80% of the power to send signals from the bottom up versus 20% top down, this is why getting grounded is the way to right yourself. Yeah. Right. And so to when in the just in this amazing example, right? Like I, I love that how simple and, and beautiful your example of, of that you you've come that we've just creatively come up here with around the smoothie or around um, tension with uh, the data with dating. Right. And then your, re your reaction to the sensations in your body, there's constructive and destructive ones. And, Sometimes you just want to eat the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I think the difference is that you are aware now that these things are happening and you, and we are practicing tools of asking ourselves, what am I feeling? Where do I feel it in my body? And what do I need? And, oh, okay. Right now I need a pizza, right? Like I'm going to let myself have the pizza, but that is a constant polling in your life from of discerning that and being more and more aware of our impulses and our addictions. And mm -hmm. I think this is one of the reasons why when you make this and when you look at this from a spiritual perspective, they, most of the, the people that, that are, have, have made this journey or are, are further ahead in the journey say, don't start unless if you're going to start, keep going, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. like keep, keep doing it, like keep doing it because the more you open, the more you notice these tensions, right? Mm. And the more it calls on you to, sh to show up in a more empowering way. Yeah. You had, you had said something in the beginning, um, about, um, men needing to do this work and the image that came up for me and i've you know noticed this in reading um cutting through spiritual ma materialism was you know whenever we go on start a path of like uh meditation or like you know doing men's work or whatever it is some some sort of like work to mm -hmm. quote unquote better ourselves um mm -hmm. there's most likely some sort of like end goal in mind and in terms of like wanting to achieve or like, you know, be like this new kind of like enlightened, embodied man. Mm. And yeah, let's talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, but then, you know, when we come up or when we have these situations where, you know, we feel like we're falling short of that idealized version of ourselves that we want mm -hmm. to. Like uh, I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. And then, and then we can, we can feel like, oh shit. Like, and then we like start to doubt ourselves. Like, oh, am I really, can I really be this man? Can I really, you know, achieve mm -hmm. this? And yeah. it's really just like, this is for, for a forever ongoing practice. You know, it's, yeah. you just keep making smoothies. You keep doing the, doing the karate practices. Yeah. I think that there's something really important though there. And there's a fork in the road in the, the, the shopping mall of, uh, the spiritual shopping mall that we have out there, right. Of, um, looking when things get hard, looking for a new meditation teacher and looking for a new re relationship, looking for a new coach, 
looking for a new community, at buying another course. I think one of the key distinctions with across all modalities of why I think we found ourselves here, and one of the things I suggest just in my own experience as a practitioner and as a man on his own path, is that the somatic journey is not in your head. Mm. And that there is a reason why these practices under have have been running underneath the surface of of all spiritual traditions and that the but then when we get away from them they become cognitive they become ideals they become ideas that people try to live up to yeah. but what we've lost in that is that this is a physical practice this isn't an ideal to live up to. This, this is a tool set to discover, and there is something physically to experience, right? And so when, when, I'm, when you talk about any time that you read Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism and it creates this idea in your head of how things should be, right, then you notice out in the practice of your life, like, wow, I'm, I am, I am just in a whirlwind of, of, of turmoil, turmoil and upset. And like, I am completely uh, like off <laughs> on a tangent right now. Right. In my, in yeah. my life. I think that that is the moment, right? Like that is the moment where there you've now noticed a sensation in your body. And that is, so that right there from a parts per a parts work perspective is a parts attack right there is mm. a part of me that has taken over and now when it wa awakens you when it wakes you up and you notice it this is one of the reasons why we practice a cutting breath and we go <sighs> right and now what what I like to point out is that this, there's this distinction between living in our head and constructing this cocoon that needs to be fueled up through thoughts and moods and judgments and stories and beliefs to feel good, to not feel pain, to not uh, feel stress or, right, or the unknown or, or, or anxiety, and then dropping out of that. And it's always, we're always woken up by a sensation in our body, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when we become conscious is when we take that breath and we get to choose a more empowering way to show up to those sensations. And being awakened isn't a, isn't a uh, it's not an event horizon. It's not like you get there and then you're like, you're done. It's, it's now something that requires determination uh, uh, skill, uh, discernment, right? Mm. Dedication to a practice in order to maintain that social milieu, in order to maintain, uh, in, in Tibetan, it's the, your shaila, right? Mm. It's all of the decisions that you make in your life that create the social emotional scaffolding of your physical reality that then bolster up your meditation practice. Right. Mm. So when, when I, when I, sh when you shoot off, right, because you're unhappy at your job and you, uh, you have a party weekend and now you have a headache and your meditation sucks, right. <laughs> or you skip your yoga practice or you skip your men's group. These are, um, you know, I think we all, we're always on our path, right. <laughs> we're always, yeah. but, but they're real, they're physical. They really aff affect our, our practice. Yeah. Sorry. I feel like just going on a <laughs> tangent there, but, but yeah, no, yeah. it's a good, it's, it's a good tangent. And what, what I was noticing, I mean, even, even in that, you know, like I noticed myself, you know, listening and paying attention, but I could feel myself kind of like rising up into mm -hmm. this place of like trying to somatically connect with, you know, particular things that that you were saying um in that in mm -hmm. that, that experience um and, and 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 i think even you know another aspect of that kind of self-leadership you know is again we're we're talking about awareness you know we're talking about awareness of ourselves um 
And I also think part of it too is also awareness of how we're impacting others too. Like, are we able to tune in to that con- to that connection of, of of the other or like someone that we're speaking with? And like, okay, are they are they connecting? Are they giving me signs that feel like I'm resonating with them? Or, or even noticing mm-hmm. of like, am I giving them the opportunity to be in this space with me? You know, like mm-hmm. we are, self-leadership is very much, you know, internal, but at the same time, there is that outward component of like our relationship, not just to our body, but to our internal or our external environment as well. Yeah. And we see it in relationship, mm. right? Like we see this in when you said, you know, yourself do uh, knowing myself, like, I think this is one of the trickiest paradoxes for this work for, for a lot of guys. This is like, I am not my roles. I am not, uh, I am not the fiance to Anna. I am not the men's coach. I am not the founder of the unshakable man. I'm, I'm not the son to Chris Wilson senior. I'm not the brother to Alex Wilson. Uh, I'm not the uh, Californian San Franciscan dude, right? Like a human being. I, I am, those are all roles that I play, Mm. right? And those are all roles that you play. And I think when we talk about like empathy and, and being with someone in their, in your experience, how am I being, how, how am I, how am I influencing the people in my life? Am I taking responsibility for my own state or am I somehow in like an emotional enmeshment with this person worrying about and anxious about how they feel, mm. right? Like, do they, do they, um, right? Because even as you shared that, there was like this undertone of like, am I doing, am I doing this right? Am I making you feel good? Mm. Right? Like, right. And what I think is so wild about this work is like, when I sit with guys like like you who have been just showing up, like I just to make this concrete, like you show up every other week, if not every week to a group and you, you just check in with Mm -hmm. a group of men. And I think the fundamental grounded thing that that's doing just like meditation is that what you're doing within meditation, somatic meditation, just to be specific, somatic meditation is we're creating a structure with our practice to, to, to attune and to identify with empty space, Mm. right? And that empty space has a lot of names. It's a primordial mirror. It's the fundamental ground. It's the internal pool of peace. It's dropping out of the head and into the body. Uh, It's, it's the vastness, right? Um, uh, It's your root chakra, right? Like it's all of these different terms, but what the key here is that it's not conditioned. Mm right? It's not the girl that you're dating in that relationship. It's not your relationship with your therapist. It's not your relationship with your job. And when you drop into that alone or with a group of other human beings, a group of other men with the same intentions, is you then get to relate to it. Mm. You see, you're like, oh, wow. I didn't even realize what was driving me to get that pizza, Mm. right? Like, wow, I've been, I've been going on these runs and I've been hurting myself. I've been running away from a feeling. Mm. Wow. For years, I thought going for a run and doing vigorous, hard exercise was good for me. Actually, it was me running away. Mm from wanting to feel yeah. from being allowing myself to feel that whatever I was feeling, but then you get a tune, right? And you can feel the difference between running away and you can feel the difference between channeling your energy and giving yourself some vigorous exercise. Right. But the two out external things look the same and yeah. only, you know, you're the only person who can get that sense. Mm-hmm. Right. And the only way you get that sense is by polling. You have to have iterations of to 
to upgrade that intuition, right? To be like, okay, so here I, it's like Goldilocks, right? Like I like this one and I, yeah. this one's too caught. This one's too cold. Right. And then you leave that container. Here I am again. I was <laughs> talking about what I've seen you do. Right. Like, so tell me if I'm, if I, if this is too much, but I, this I laugh at this because it's like I noticed in the podcast recently I've been wanting to have these conversations with guys, but really I feel like what's happening is, is I'm I'm telling you what I see in you, right? Mm. Like what I see you doing. And and there's a craving, there's a desire to share what like a portal of what I see men like you doing in our in our groups out with the outside world. Right. Cause I, I just feel like yeah. there's a lot of men that just have, we're completely unaware. We just have no idea that this work is available to us. Yeah. And yeah, I, I appreciate you, you sharing that. And that feels, it, it, it feels special to be a part of that in that, you know, in this being a dialogue, there is, you're also in a way like shining a spotlight in terms of like, you know, how you've experienced men showing up in this work. And then, you know, of course we get to discuss, you know, what our particular kind of like flavor is in terms of like how we show up in this, in this work. Yeah, no, I think you're, what you said about, you know, being in these intentional spaces, you know, it, it, you're being in this empty space. We are, we are naturally going to try and fill that space as hard as we try not to, um, mm -hmm. we are going to, you know, bring in story, bring in, bring in anything. And I think what's so beautiful about, you know, being in these containers with other men, um, and purely kind of, and purely dropping into our semantic experiences and then just allowing whatever come to come up, come up. There's no pressure around it feeling like it has to like be a certain way, any sort of expectation, like it has to go anywhere. Like I've. I feel that half the t like most of the times that I bring something up in circles, like this was just something that just needed to be witnessed both for myself mm -hmm. and wanting it to be witnessed and seen by someone else. And this was something that wanted to be witnessed. Yeah. What I notice in there is like, you, you know how to use the space for you. You know, one of the things that works for you and that's to, bring to the container something that that needs to be witnessed that hasn't been witnessed maybe by you through a journal mm. right through your own practice through creating art right like because you can do this work on your own right but you're doing yeah. it you, that's something that's a way that you use this space and then i heard you yeah. say that you're not that um people aren't ain't there that you're not anxious but about how to show up but some men are True. Right? Like some men, some men come into the space and they're like, how do I be here? I don't, I don't know how to act. Um, right. And you're, they're just completely locked <laughs> up and, and right. And, and I think that that's again, to the point is we're learning to work with this stuff. That's all we're doing. And, and no one ever type like this, there's no other way to learn this other than in relationship, right. With, a group of a small group of other human beings who gather and then maybe one man comes into the space. Like, like what's, what is, is there like a moment? Is there, is there a, a something that's easily accessible for you of, of what, like being in the space of being like, wow, memorable or impactful, like getting to work on something. Mm. The experience that comes to mind, I think it was, it was probably one of my first uh, drop-in check-ins in the Unshakable Man community. Um, I remember sharing. I think I was I was having discomfort in in my groin, um, and there was like one. I don't remember how, how how it came up, but I remember voicing like there's like the feeling to like just like yell or just or just like scream, mm -hmm. and all of you that were in, in the space just full on gave me that permission to do that. And I just, I, I just yelled, just like in my bedroom, still living with a roommate at the time. And I, I probably yelled like, you know, two or three times, just like a good, just like, 
belly belly yell and yeah. you know my roommate knocked on the door and was like is everything okay I'm like, yeah i'm just i'm just I'm doing, doing i think i remember that <laughs> <laughs> i think um, i remember that and it was just i do remember that it was just very um very cathartic to like have that you know have that be held for that and then and then even to receive feedback of what that experience was like to hear from from men of like wow that was really incredible that you just leaned into that and just did that for this being like your first or second time here hmm. that's beautiful man even in your mention of like that you know, something in your groin right and then uh, the ability, the the intimacy to 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 share with another group of men how a part of your body, like your groin, how it's what you're noticing in terms of physical sensation in there, mm. right? And then to channel that and to break to break through and to use because your voice is energy, right? And it, and it and and there's a whole muscle contraction that comes with yelling and just screaming. Yeah. And to do that in a container with another group of men, we have the, we have a, a physical relationship with that. Right. And it, it is truly to me, it's magic. It, it, it is, it, it's not just our, you know, it's our nervous systems. It's, it's, it's our bodies coming into tendon mend, but it's that channeling of that energy and realizing that this, that something is there to be discovered. You, in that example, you took a risk. You stepped the level of safety one step deeper, two steps deeper, three steps deeper. And the men in the space were able to hold that. Yeah. And that's a gift, right? It impacts us. It's a, it's an ex physical experience. And then we leave the space and we realize how much we're holding back, right? In relationship, maybe to another experience. Mm. And to me, that is all learning, right? It's like, even without up here, right? Without coming away with, like a, a didactive paper on, on, on codependency and uh, male, female communication and like, right. Like, or whatever, whatever we want, co-regulation, whatever mm -hmm. subject we wanted to like get intellectual on, right. Like all of those things are happening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I wanted to add to that, you know, it's, it is, um, practicing within this within these very wonderfully held containers you know is definitely like i would i would say really like you know almost step one because it's like and then step two you know in being able to bring you know that level of awareness and courageous vulnerability to you know when you're out in the world and you're not in that in that safe space of men like and I will say there is a big, there's a probably a big gap between step one and step two, because like it takes <laughs> tremendous courage to be able to, you know, share with someone that you may not have that same um, sense of intimacy and trust with that. Like, Hey, I'm like mm -hmm. noticing, like I'm noticing the discomfort in, in my balls right now. Um, maybe mm -hmm. you don't have to go that detail with them, but uh, to that, that, that degree. Uh, hey, of like, I mean, you might like, I don't know who you're talking to in your mind in that story, but like, <laughs> if I was, I'll just say like, if I'm, if I'm in my relationship with my partner, right. Like being allowed to, to feel and to receive, right. Like yeah. that, that absolutely has been a huge part of my own practice in relationship with men like you, right. Like, where you've inspired me to, to become more aware of parts of my body and to not in an aggressive way, right? Not in like a dot, like a culturization of what it means to have sex, mm -hmm. right? Like, like to, to, to feel and to, to essentially receive pleasure, right? That was a, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just like, yeah, let's talk about it. Oh, I, I feel like that is like I could we could do a whole other podcast on that, but like, um, yeah, because yeah, like I mean, mm -hmm. what I will say, like I have had the experience of 
um, kind of like the flip side of like not so much sharing like, hey, I'm feeling discomfort. But I remember being on might have been like a second or third date. And I remember sharing with a woman like, hey, like when you said that, I felt I felt like, you know, charge in my balls. Or I just like I just felt like energy like in in, in my cock mm-hmm. and just like noticing how it just like it immediately just like sucked the like attention like to us. Like the connection just felt incredibly just potent and uh-huh. not even really like worrying about like how she was going to handle it. Like Mm -hmm. I took responsibility Mm -hmm. for my feeling and like feeling safe enough to share it. Um, Mm -hmm. And that, that like, that was a okay thing for me to like share. Cause it was my own experience. I wasn't like my dick is rock hard. You know, it wasn't that like needing to impress her. Yeah. Notice that when you express what you are feeling as a human being and a man, you can never be wrong. Mm. You can never be wrong. It's totally different yeah. to project what you are feeling onto another. That We do not have permission much of the time to do that, mm. right? Unless somebody has entered in to wanting that, right? right? But in what your example to like what I heard you say, was hey i when di- when you did that i felt charge in my balls right like you're you're sh- expressing and you know how to say when you when something happened when you did that i felt yeah right it's so small yeah right and it's so small i could have i mean it could have easily been said as you just turned me on but again just noticing how like then it's putting the the experience mm-hmm. or the responsibility of my feelings on her, you know, there like there's mm-hmm. less ownership of the experience in my body um, versus if I said, oh, you did this to me. And I think we can apply that yeah. as well to, you know, when we get into like arguments, you know, like it's your fault that I'm upset or like, you know, you did this that caused me to feel angry, you know, versus like, Ooh, let's I'm, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Like coming. So, so in the, in that, that example, right. You made me feel right. Mm. Becoming the primary caretaker for our parts. And so we're using in this example, we're using a romantic relationship, Mm -hmm. right. But this, this, the, the stimulus could come from uh, your job. It could come from your goals right like like saying like i want to achieve something right like this is how a p- core part of my practice and the unshakable man is i when i said i want to to allow this thing to grow i want to nurture this community right the second i step out of these containers into my life i'm having an experience and i'm being challenged to show up to it in a more empowering way and to to notice the insecurities the fears right mm-hmm. and to to learn to work with them mm-hmm. right and my old process of working with them was to shut them down and to be bold and brave mm-hmm. which was disconnected from my experience right it was it was shielding that off it wasn't allowing myself to for it to move through my body and to be released through a creative practice or through whatever my next step is, or to just clear it completely, right? Mm-hmm. And let it go completely. And yeah. sometimes I lose it for like 48 hours or 12 hours, right? But you made me feel, right? When in the in this example, what is, and I don't want to put you on the spot. So I do want to ask you more, like bring this more into your mm-hmm. your practice. What do you do when, I'm going to say she, when she disrupts your well-being, makes you angry, hurts you, makes a, gets you upset? What is the self-leadership response to that? Mm. Hmm. How do you work with it? Well, I'd say, well, first I, 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 want, to, I want to say I wish that I can... It's been it's been a while since I've been in like a romantic relationship, so I don't have a very clear yeah. experience. So a part part of my answer, I feel like, is coming from 
a place of like what ideally I would like to be doing, what like what feels what in the best case yeah. scenario, how I would want to handle it. Um, yeah. If you want to use an example that's more connected to your life, we can. But go ahead, um, like with the with the ideal. I'd say, really, first, you know, taking taking note of what am I what am I feeling, you know, and you know, in the and in the heated arguments, you know, or like moments of being triggered, um, that can so easily be passed over. Like I remember in an instance. I got into a, my, uh, my former roommate had snapped at me for, for, for something. And my immediate reaction was to like, do something about it was to like, mm -hmm. to give context. He basically, uh, complained, complained about a, a certain smell that I, that I was emitting. I, I think just from like, from like BO and, uh, he just, he just like snapped at me about it. Uh, cause, and it felt like it was, if, it first felt like an experience of like a it was incredibly aggressive. And so I was feeling myself withdrawing and it also felt there's a level of trust broken of like, Hey, if this was something that was bothering you, like, why didn't you say anything? Why is this coming out mm -hmm. in this kind of hostile tone? And mm -hmm. how and did you feel? Um, Enraged. I felt more violated. I felt mm -hmm. that he, I felt more on the defense. Like I needed to protect myself or I, I needed to right this wrong and that this was entirely my fault. Um, mm -hmm. And so my instant reaction to that was just kind of just to take his, take his abuse, his verbal abuse, and then go out and like, buy like you know candles and like fresh scent things to like you know clear clear the problem Ooh. up and i and i i noticed that i was like the that was the first thing i do i i, I fled i had to create that space and get away mm -hmm. from that um and then mm -hmm. also try and fix it as well yeah so you fond did you ever have an opportunity to come back to the to the situation and to reconnect on it yeah. So after after I had returned from getting uh, new new scents to fill the the apartment, I did. I was able. We were able to uh, discuss, and I was able to share kind of like what it brought up in me uh, in terms of in that moment. And he also shared as well in terms of you know his own relationship to you know not sharing about it and. Um, and also acknowledging the aggressiveness of of his tone, um, yeah. so we were we were able to come back to it. And I and I think you know that is an important part of it of you know being able to create that space to repair, you know, to yeah. repair and to create that kind of distance and not try and solve it in that instant when either one or both people are, you know uh highly Figured. activated wow can we can we take another five minutes and just go through this sure from yeah. a self-leadership perspective absolutely so the first thing i want to bring in is a judgment and i want to bring in the judgment as an example of um i want to say just the predominant culture of manhood and this might be a story in the head of men who are listening to this that are like are you serious like really come on what the fuck right <laughs> like like tell them to fuck off. Mm. I'm conjuring this right now, right? And it's not just present for me, but it's something that I want to recognize because it's um, because there's this whole predominant within that example. There's an inc it's it is real, and it happened, and there is a judgment for so many men that is like. If I even engaged on this subject, something about me is too sensitive, mm. right? Like something about me is too, it's almost like there could be a neediness there, mm. right? But that wasn't the case for you. That wasn't. This, this, hit, this hit you, it made you feel like there was a, a part of you feel like it was doing something wrong and- 
to shield it off, it sounds like you that part that was completely you were frozen and like almost just like took it. And yeah. then the first action you notice is to go out and to 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 gather candles to like right that wrong. Right. But yet the response with the with this roommate occurred in a certain way. And there's also a deeper part of you that needed to be spoken for around probably around how you're being treated in your home. Yeah. Right. And these are all different parts that are accessible and there, but not all men are able to connect with those parts. Right. And so what happens is, is the one part takes over. The one, the one that has been the most protective, that has a game plan for scenarios like this, right? And that this, in this work, that's what we're discovering is we're learning to become aware of those parts and then to, to see how they've served us, mm. right? But then to, but then as we befriend them to become their primary caretaker, so they're not in charge, we are the deeper awareness within yeah, that isn't a part it's experiencing through these parts. Right. And so then when I heard that you went to go get the candles, there was a part of me that felt protective, like, Oh, right. I felt it in the front of my body. Like, Oh, like, like noticing you. And then I labeled that as fawning, mm. right? Like wanting to structure your environment to not have something occur. Mm. Right. Versus just being like, I smell, I'm a smelly <laughs> dude, right? Like, right? Like, and then, and then cleaning the apartment right? yeah, <laughs> or cleaning right. up your, your act, right? We, to take care of someone, right? For what someone wants. But, but we all have these different fight, flight, freeze, or fawn responses and they're adaptive. They aren't conscious. They're not, they're not things that we think about. They're, they're, they're adaptive responses that have, we've that our body has adapted to to keep us safe yeah right and they worked because you survived to get to where you are today but now you don't want to just survive you want to thrive you want to be in a in a in cultivate relationships in your life where you're able to be a, a multifaceted dynamic human being that is vibrant and poignant and courageous and where you can have structure, right? Like you can have interdependency, yeah. right? With people, not just codependency, but interdependent. And so that coming back, that that next thing that I, I'd like to point out is that stage of of where you said, like, I'm allowed to things are allowed to go wrong, right? Like stuff when a p parts are triggered. Right when parts are in a parts attack, and we're both in our worst behavior, we're not actually being. How old were you when this happened? Oh, this was like this is, like is this a year yesterday? or two ago. <laughs> I was it was I was like 29, <laughs> 20, 28. It was, yeah. it was like a year ago or so. Yeah. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. So 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 this happens, right? And and you're that part isn't twenty eight years old. Mm. Right, that part that that goes out to structure. Who knows how old do you think it is for you? When was the time in your life where you started um, getting the the agency to actually uh, protect yourself by putting on, by making yourself look good, by making yourself your your environment be okay? What mm. is that for you? How old is that? I would the number coming to me would probably be maybe like seven or eight. I can give you mine. Hmm. How, how, what grade are you in when you're, um, when you're in like seventh grade, eighth grade? Um, that would what probably, what grade are you in when you're seventh or eighth? Seventh or eighth would probably be like, maybe like 14, 10, 12, thir 12, 14? 12 or 13, yeah. maybe. I think 12. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's when I was, when I was in seventh grade, mm. It's when I had long hair and I started getting made fun of for my long curly hair. Mm. So I started doing my hair to look a certain way, mm. right? To not get made fun of. Yeah. And for you, you're saying it was like seven or eight. Was there something attached to that? Some memory? I mean, I, it's there isn't a specific memory, but the thing that comes up for me is 
you know, just like the way that I behaved in school in terms of just like always like wanting to excel and like, you know, wanting Mm. to please my parents, you know, and like the threat of like get it of like not getting good grades even though like there was no explicit threats of like you know being abused or it was like this this fear of like what i don't want to know what happens if i ever do fail or like do or not get an a i notice a part of me wishing i had that (laughs) that's awesome that's great great so that so there to just to come back come back to that that part within the episode right because this is an episode right Mm. a a thing happened and then and then there was an an unconscious reaction and then you are getting to come back to it and even now we're working with it and this was a year ago right and so right and we're working with it in our group we would work with it in a different way than the way you and i are right now in in a cognitive right somewhere on the edge we would work with it in our body more right Mm. and bring it back up and then show up to it in a different way but um but what i'm appreciating there is that you had an an appreciation is a part of our learning skills by the way right like appreciating what we see so what i saw there is that you are allowing yourself to go through this experience and then come back to it right And this idea within a partnership that a conflict-free relationship is a good relationship, right, is not is just eradicated (laughs) in a self-leadership practice, right? Because what happens is the the thing occurs, and then you become conscious, right? Mm. And when you become conscious, this is where scheduling arguments, scheduling fights comes in, is now you're becoming, you're actually learning to structure that men's group environment in your life. Yeah. Right. Because now you know what it feels like to arrive in a space. You know what it feels like to have agreements. You know what it feels like to ground and to check in. And now you can start to say, hey, what happened last week? There's a part of me that wasn't okay with it. And I'd like to have a talk about it. Right. And then you can like come back in and you can talk about that. Right. But then it becomes oftentimes, I think people become. Uh, now you're working with your parts in in like a mixed state, right? Mm. And that's that's where the real work of partnership and relating begins, right? Yeah. Because then now some want somebody in the relationship might actually shut down because they feel so scared. Parts of them feel so scared that it's actually easier for them to be really angry, right? Because in a way that anger is like a shield, but to actually come back to a seated position and to open to what was going on for them and to take responsibility for what they're feeling and to allow it to be expressed. Many people don't even know how to do that. Yeah. And yeah, and it just, it doesn't without having, you know, without having those, those tools or even, or even being able to experience those tools, you know, being used in a container, like an unshakable man, it's like you, they're, it's the only way to really like really begin to to learn them is like just to experience them you know joining a men's group seeing what it's like or being held uh and witnessed by other men um and Mm -hmm. you know and i love what you said before you know in like for guys that are new to this or are thinking about it's like yeah like how do i show up in these spaces and that is that's a process of discovery and and you know right. and and i and i also just kind of want to say that you know this is not an overnight kind of thing you know and this is a continued practice of like learning and applying these practices and tools in all areas of your life and it's also to say once when you learn them uh that you won't ever get triggered again you know as you said you know the no. event the event happens and then you you awaken you you snap to it and you notice it and you can choose how to consciously deal with it. And it, it just ties into that's That's what self-leadership is. It's just continuing to be, you know, awakened to what's present right now and uh, choosing, you know, what is, what is best for you in that, in that moment for you and your parts. Mm. 
Beautifully said, Ben. It's just wonderful, man. Thank you so much for coming in here and um, just having this conversation, being willing to bring um, uh, to bring this work out into the light and to engage on it and to just talk about it, even when we don't necessarily have uh, like a, a course outline to go through for this type of conversation. Yeah, uh, this is really what what I'm, I'm hoping to to be able to share with men, just to see who responds to it. And mm. my, my hunch is like what I feel connected to is that when a man like you, uh, just shares the reality of the work with me and with the world, the way that you are right now, the, the men that feel connected to this, feel it. Mm. And so thank you, man. Thank you for sharing because that's how men find this work. Thank you, Chris. It's been I yeah. so in this this hour has just has has flown by and I feel like we could just continue to like there's so much more that yeah. we, we could talk about and I would love to continue to talk more about this yeah. o- over time. Yeah. Now that we've gotten this one out of the way, maybe we'll have more structured ones about trailheads and parts <laughs> attacks and finding parts and befriending parts and it, sex all of and, that. But sex and intimacy the, and yeah. Sex and intimacy. Yes. Yes. We could do that. And, um, and, and so to any of the men who are listening, uh, Ben, uh, he, he alluded to this, but this has come out in the structure of our community and why is our community structured the way that it is? And what I noticed in Ben Ben is I in in your reflection there at the end is that this is not an overnight thing, right? But when I look at when I look at the structure of our community and I ask myself why is it structured? Why did we end up this way? It's because of that. And so what we have available to you is Unshakable Man cohorts. These are three month long. Uh, transformative men's work journeys. We meet nine times as the same group of men, nine to 27 men, and we go on a journey together. We meet two hours a week. It's a beautiful experience. If you head over to our website and subscribe, we'll share information about it and you're welcome to schedule a community welcome call if you're interested. Those I like to think of as are like training camps. They're like the way we get into this work. We get it started. We get the engine going. We become aware of our awareness and these different skills. We start working with it in our life in a different way. But then there's the day in, day out, week in, week out, long-term practice. And that's what the community is for. And mo- I'd say about 20 to 30% of the men that go through a cohort end up practicing in the community in a way like Ben has. And when we show up, We're showing up just once a week for an hour with a group of men, and we learn to bring what is ever we're working with in our life. And when we do that, other men in the space get to work with it with us, right? And that's the power of this community, right? That's the power of doing this work is that in our traditional culture of manhood, we all, we act tough and we don't have opportunities to to hear about what happened when we were smelling bad and how it how it right like and how we dealt with that right and because of that we don't learn we don't know we're unaware of how to respond to these really important life challenges so i'm chris wilson thank you so much benjamin for coming in ben uh do you have anything you want to share or say just complete this no i i really appreciate the space and uh, I just, you know, really hope if, you know, if there is any, any kind of takeaway, um, for, you know, from this, from this chat, it's just that, you know, it's, um, it's a practice and it's, you, you, you fall off and you get back on and there is no, there's like never a- a- any point of like, okay, like, uh, you can always be on, on this path, you know, you don't need to you know, go to do certain courses, be a practice meditator. You can start this anytime, even if you're feeling incredibly resistant to it. That's probably the perfect time to start. (laughs) May the practice continue. Mm. Have a great day, Ben. Thank Thank you you so much. You too. Bye. Bye.